The new Dungeons and Dragons movie just came out and I wanted to do some cool dragon effects using some of our dragon assets from the Dark Magic pack. I'm gonna show you a cool way to animate them and we're gonna use some of our flamethrower effects from our superhero pack. So let's head on over to After Effects and see how we can do it. All right, so I'm in After Effects and this little video was actually really fun to do. Now. A lot of the shots we're about to do have all sort of the same techniques of how I blended everything. So I'm just going to um, do two shots. I'm going to do this shot here and the little closer up version of that and show you a few techniques to make that look nice. First off, let's take the side shot here and throw it into a new composition by putting it down, uh, dragging it to this little create new composition. Now we have a perfect composition. So first thing we're going to do is put in the dragon. So I'm going to use Dragon Landing 2 from our Dark Magic pack. And he kind of roars, but the problem is there is no dragon that's uh, blasting fire down. So we're going to have to make that. So this is kind of like the fun thing about our products where we you can mash it and make it your own just to make it work. In Dragon Landing 2, it's the right angle, but he's roaring up, but we can fix that pretty easily. So let's uh, let's grab this guy. Let's grab him and we'll throw him in. And he's a little bit lower there. Uh, and he's facing, you know what? He's facing the right way. That's, <laughs> that's how we want to do it right there. Uh, no, so uh, we want to flip him. So the easiest way of doing that is just going, uh, right clicking on this, going to transform and flip horizontally, and that will flip the guy horizontally. Now we're just gonna kind of move him around and place him where we think it will work the best. I might push him back a hair. There we go. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is use something called Mesh Warp. So if we go over to our effects and presets and type in Mesh Warp, it's in the distort tab and we'll throw that on our footage right there. Um, basically what this does is you can move sections around and warp it and kind of, you know, you can get pretty silly effects like that. Uh, and it's a really simple effect. It only really has a few options, but it, it's very powerful. So um, we need a little bit more grid. So if we go to rows and columns over here, we can actually increase the columns and that will give us more detail and right here we have uh, a spot here and a spot here and and the only reason why i want two columns here is so whenever i move his head this kind of stays there so we can manipulate everything else okay now that that's done uh we can actually animate it so if you go over here to distortion mesh and click the little stopwatch you can actually create a uh, keyframe and then it, when we go forward, when he's roaring, we can now, actually we need to add a, a row up there so we can control this. Uh, we can take these points here and kind of click them and move them. And if we take these little points here in the crosshatch, we can rotate them. And that way we can kind of move and distort this to kind of match the position of where he should be spitting that fire, you know? He spit hot fire. So it's really just kind of messing with it and making it work uh, for your shot. So I'm just kind of mesh warping it. Now that we've created the keyframe at the beginning, this is going to slowly warp. So it's gonna be normal and then it's gonna slowly warp into that position. So when we watch it, you can see his head is now generally in the right position. We might actually have to force his head a little bit more down. If I turn off that mesh warp, you can see how much we've done and it's huge what we've done. And it's just really meshing and warping it to make it work. Beautiful. We can also time remap this so he's not like going down right there. Uh, so if we go to time, enable time remapping, so when you right click on it, uh, you can take the section of time you want. So I'm going to say right here, I'm going to make a um, keyframe and then right before he like starts moving down, which is about there, I'm going to make another keyframe. And basically, if I move this keyframe over now that I've created that keyframe, that's just 
pushing the time over. So whenever I play it, it's kind of like slowing everything down to that section. So nothing after that keyframe I made will play, but it's just slowing that section down. Now it's kind of looking little John Woo where, you know, <laughs> slow motion, fake slow motion. So a way to fix that, like kind of stepping where it's kind of like stepping into frame is adding frame blending, which is just a little section right here. And when you play forward, it will interpolate in between the frames. And this is, you can also click it again and that will use optical flow. And that's a way, it's gonna look a lot smoother when you do it that way. So if you look at it, it looks really smooth now, cool. So now we got a dragon spitting hot fire, but not yet. We have to add that hot fire to the flames, you know? But before we do that, let's uh, let's match the color because he's looking a little bit placed on there. Um, this is just a good practice to have. I'm gonna add a Lumetri color. So now that we have Lumetri color, we can start messing with it to work for this. Now he's a bit pink and a little bit like he's a little bit purpley. So if we move our tint over to the left, I believe we can make him a little bit more green to match kind of like the grass reflecting up. And then we'll make him a little bit more blue to match kind of like the, the area. And that's already looking pretty good. We might up the contrast and then maybe bring the exposure down quite a bit and maybe bring the shadows up. You know, it's really just playing and making sure that's looking pretty good. One thing, uh, if we see her, she's kind of out of focus and that's more on my, my fault because I didn't focus this properly. But uh, <laughs> if we go in here and we add a, like a flat fast box blur, uh, we can just set it to, I don't know, 2.2. Yeah, so 0.2, matching the blur a little bit. And he's a little, he's still a little pink if you see kind of right there. So we'll, we'll, we'll throw some more green his way. Now we gotta make him spit the hot fire. There are flame, um, like uh, dragon flames in the uh, fantasy pack. But for this particular one, I thought the flamethrower from the superhero pack looked better. Um, so I'm using flamethrower too from the superhero pack. And also from the superhero pack is the flame shield that will also throw in that she will be blocking the fire with, with her magical powers. So we're gonna throw in flamethrower two and we're gonna throw him behind the dragon uh, and we're gonna scale it down. We're gonna take this and sort of rotate him around, move him around and make it look real nice. And we're gonna have him spit it right when he opens his mouth, make him spit it. We might have to animate some keyframes here, but that's no big deal. So we're just gonna animate the position. I'll hit P on my keyboard and then hit the little stopwatch icon and then move forward and move this down just like so. And move him down just like so. And then that looks, okay. So the end is kind of like super snappy. Uh, an easy way to fix that, if you hit F9 on your keyboard, that will smooth out any keyframe at the end. So yeah, it's looking a lot smoother now. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna match that blur. So I'm gonna add another fast box blur. I believe we'll put like a f five or six on there because this is a big 4K file, so it needs more blur. But yeah, now, now it's matching quite a bit. Beautiful, now she's just getting burned. You know, we don't want that. We want a shield. So in the superhero pack, there is a shield just for that. So we're gonna put that below the flamethrower effect and we're gonna scale it down quite a bit. And we're gonna rotate it to fit our actress here, the lovely Erin Beckler. All right, so now we're just going to sort of place it where she would be and then we're gonna move it down the timeline just to right when it's supposed to hit her. Ah, let's throw it above, let's throw the shield right above the, and that's looking pretty dang good. Uh, one thing we can do is we can uh, sort of mask out the area of the flamethrower of the shield so it's not passing the shield, so it's like it's blocking. So if we just mask it off with the pen tool, and then if I hit M on my keyboard and subtract it out and then hit F on my keyboard and feather that out, then we have ourselves 
the blockage, right? So that's looking a lot better. One thing we can do is maybe set the flamethrower and the flamethrower shield to add, and that might bring some brightness to everything. It will cut out the smoke, but it will add sort of this like nice effect. It's looking a little placed on, so how do we how do we fix that? How do we make it feel not placed on? And that's where things come in, like we add lens flares. So let's add a lens flare right at the base of the mouth so it's like his mouth is so freaking hot. So let's uh, hit Control Y or Command Y and add a solid and that, and you can just make it a black solid. Make sure it's comp size and hit okay. Then I'm going to add the lens flare effect, which is a terrible lens flare effect, but you know what? It's gonna do perfectly fine for this. So uh, it just adds a lens flare to your footage, but we're gonna set this to add, just like we did the fire, and we're gonna put that at the base of the mouth. And we're going to add fast box blur and blur it out a lot. And then we're gonna add tint to the effect. And we're going to make the white like an orange to match sort of the mouth there, right? Then we're going to animate the flare center to match the mouth throughout the shot. We're going to animate its brightness, so right when it starts coming on, we will have it at full brightness, and then zero brightness as his mouth is opening. So just right there, we've added this really cool effect. Like without it, it looks okay, but with it, wow, you know, it feels so much more bright and powerful. Then what we're gonna do is flicker the brightness, right? So it's gonna be like really bright, but we kind of want it to be like flickering and kind of have this intense fiery effect. So a uh, fun way of doing that is at the flare brightness stopwatch, if you hit alt on your keyboard and click that, it will pop open a little uh, text thing down here. Now, if you delete what the text says right there and type in the expression wiggle, and then an open parentheses, and then you can say two numbers followed by a comma, uh, that they're separated by a comma. So the first number would be how many times a second, or how many times a second this will happen, and the second one would be the number that it will change, right? And, and I can explain that a little bit better, but um, so let's say like eight times a second, this will fluctuate uh, a brightness of 20% difference, right? And so when we play this, you can see that it's f flickering like that. And we can make this a smaller number, like, I don't know, 10, and it's not going to change the brightness as much. As you can see, it's less intense. But if we want it to be faster, we change that first number to a higher number, like maybe 12. And we can see it's more flickery. And I like that effect a lot. Um, so that's pretty, uh, that's a really cool effect to do. And now that is pretty epic. Now we can say that's done for the second shot. This is a pretty interesting shot, right? So we had a uh, Joey here throwing the, this little light over her to add some fire effect. The good thing about this is that he runs out of frame. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to, uh, Get a section of video we like here, and I'm thinking about here. And then we're gonna duplicate this file, and then throw the part where Joey runs out of frame right there, and then we're going to time freeze frame that. And we're gonna bring that to the end of the clip. I'm gonna trim comp to work area. And now we have a freeze frame, but if we mask away where Joey was, now we have a perfectly clean plate. So we're gonna add flamethrower two and flamethrower shield and we're going to uh, move them down in the timeline so that they are already in full blast. And we're gonna bring the shield, scale it down, match what we need to, scale that flamethrower down, rotate it to the correct area, just like that. And we'll move it down like that. And then we'll mask away 
the parts that we don't want it to do and then subtract that area and then feather that mask by hitting F and feather. So now we have this, it looks pretty cool. And we're going to, again, take these flamethrower assets and turn them to add. Just like that. And they're pretty bright, but honestly, in a situation like this, it would look like this, uh, which is looks pretty dang cool, in my opinion. We're going to add a displacement map to make it feel like there's heat coming off of the fire to really sell it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate these layers and then pre-compose them. And I'm not going to adjust duration to the time span. And I'm going to call this displacement. Make sure you're moving all the attributes as well. Hit OK. And then we have a comp with the fire and flame in there. And I'm going to add a control Y and add a black solid right behind them. So there's no alpha channel. It's just the fire and on black, right? We're going to move that displacement to the bottom so you don't even see it. And then we're going to add a adjustment layer by hitting control alt Y or a command alt Y, I believe command option Y, I guess. And we're going to put that in front of our side shot. And then we're going to add the effect displacement map. And what this effect does is we can reference the displacement we've made, right? And let me solo out the fire and just show you what it's doing. It's referencing the fire. And if I really crank this, you can see that it's uh, making like almost like a heat map of the fire. And it really just makes it feel super, super hot because that's kind of how fire kind of interacts with the world. Right. Uh, and if we hit wrap around pixels, that will save a little bit of that edge detail. Um, I mean, don't go too far with it, obviously, because you're going to break your image. And if you do break your image, you're going to have to scale in a little bit. Like you can see like the edge here, but you can just scale in and that will save it. Uh, and then we'll add that fire. And the difference is really palpable. You can see just like the heat coming off of it. And it really looks really nice. If we add an adjustment layer over everything add a transform effect, we can scale everything in and position it a little bit so we're not seeing those edges and it looks quite hot to me. Little final touches you can do, we can pre-compose all of this and hit P, Alt click on the uh, stopwatch and type in wiggle. And then again, we're going to say, I wanna move the position every eight frames or every eight second, every eight times a second, excuse me, move the position, let's say 10 pixels. So now we have sort of this really quick moving thing. And honestly, I might make this even crazier. I might make this like 12 times a second. You know, that's looking pretty freaking epic. So we'll take that, scale that by 110. Um, but yeah, that's just the little final touches you can do. And that is it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give us a like. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe and I'll see you next time.